Okay, good morning everyone, and welcome to week five of the Writing Wikipedia Articles class. This is uh, this is an exciting time in the class because we've been uh, we've had the final project going for a few weeks. So some of our students have uh, have been doing some excellent work on Wikipedia articles already. And like last week, we have several guests with us who are going to talk about us about um, about some OER related articles on Wikipedia, as well as some of the processes of Wikipedia. Uh, and supplement some of what we've learned already. So um, I'm going to just give a, a brief introduction to the guests that we have right now, and then uh, we'll hear from them in a few minutes. Uh, we're first going to hear from Elitra, who is an Italian Wikipedian. Uh, she works on the Italian and English language Wikipedias, but, uh, but mainly, mainly Italian. She's in Bologna and has been a, uh, a Wikipedian since 2005. And her focus has largely been on improving help and policy pages on Wikipedia uh, to make sure that new contributors are able to find their way around and understand what's going on. Uh, she's also been a, a very active member of what's known as OTRS. That's, uh, that's the name of the software that's used by um, essentially the volunteer-run customer service uh, aspect of Wikipedia. So when someone is uh, reading Wikipedia and clicks through to contact the site, um, they will eventually find an email address. And that is uh, basically an address that is staffed by volunteers, where people can, if, if maybe there's an article about the person and they have a problem with it, or if they want to contribute a photo but they haven't worked on Wikipedia before, they can get an answer to their question. Um, and she's also currently working for the Wikipedia, the Wikimedia Foundation, um, doing uh, doing community support for the visual editor, which is something we've encountered a little bit in the class. Uh, this is the version of editing Wikipedia where you don't have to deal with the wiki syntax and markup, uh, where you can just uh, it's it's just what you see is what you get, and you can uh, click right in and start editing an article. So if you have questions about, about that, uh, Elitra should be able to answer those questions. And finally, she's done uh, a good deal of work with uh, what are known as GLAM organizations in the Wikipedia movement uh, and elsewhere. So that's short for galleries, libraries, archives, museums. So essentially, uh, cult cultural institutions that might have information or media to contribute to Wikipedia. Um, and so she has worked with uh, organizations, including the Lettera 27 Foundation, uh, to help them to participate in Wikipedia and share their knowledge through it. Uh, after Elitra, we're going to hear from Lane Raspberry and Matt Sennett. Uh, Lane and Matt have been working together on WikiProject Open Access, which is a project that we've mentioned a couple of times that's very closely related to our work with open educational resources. Open access is basically a movement to, uh, to ensure that uh, research, especially publicly funded research, is released in a way that, uh, that the public who paid for it can access it for free online uh, instead of having to pay for it again through a database or something like that. Uh, and so um, Wiki Project Open Access is similar to Communicate OER is an effort to improve related articles on Wikipedia. And also, uh, Lane, uh, I've worked with uh, with the US-based nonprofit Consumer Reports, which is part of a, a project to inc improve medical and health-related information and the public's access to it in general. And so Wikipedia is one of the ways that they, uh, that they do that. So he served as their, uh, their Wikipedian in residence, where he has uh, advised them and their partner organizations on what is appropriate to add to Wikipedia and, uh, and how to use it as a, as a way to share information broadly. So uh, as you can tell, we have uh, lots, of, lots of, of expertise today. Um, I do want to take a moment, as we usually do at the beginning of the class, and just uh, see if there are any questions out there. Of course, our, our lab session on Thursdays is the place to really dig in and uh, take detailed questions. But if anyone is trying to work on their, their homework assignment or on their final project and 
has a question before we get started, uh, please speak up now or type your question in the chat window and we'll take a, a couple minutes for that if needed. Um, and I guess uh, as we're uh, waiting to see if anyone has any questions, I also want to point out our Etherpad. We always have this, uh, this web page that we can take shared notes uh, for each of our classes. Uh, unlike other weeks uh, in the past, uh, we really we've we've put a lot of information in there at the beginning this time. Uh, both Elytra and Matt sent me a list of links that they're likely to uh, to mention in their talks. So we put all of that in, as well as uh, some biographical information. So if you don't always look at the Etherpad, this might be a good week to open that link. It's at the bottom of your screen in Blackboard Collaborate uh, and. Uh, you might want to take a look and follow along that way. So I'm just uh, just watching to see if we have any any questions. I'm not seeing a whole lot of activity in the chat window, so I'm thinking that we might just go right to Elytra to start us off. Elytra, would you like to get started? And shall I pull up your first um, one? Do you hear me? Yes. Can you hear not me, guys? Here. Okay. <laughs> Hi. Um, okay. Um, Pete say uh, pretty much everything. Um, I'll just add that I am truly glad to be here. I learned about your course uh, some time ago. I was lurking Pete's Twitter account, and uh, as I offered to help with this course, he's been studying the best way to involve me since then, so finally, here I am. Um, as he said, I am not much of an article writer myself, actually, uh, but I'm here because I think I can still provide some tips, which I hope you'll find useful, and maybe also some motivation, we'll see. Um, some of this knowledge, as Pete said, is coming from some job experiences, by the way. I'd mainly cover a few topics. If you have questions, I'm, I'd ask you, and you, are, and you fear that you might be forgetting them later, please just write them in the chat and I'll answer everything at the end of the session, if that's okay for you. Uh, I've taken some notes as well, so I won't forget what I meant to tell you. Uh, want to start by telling you something more uh, about the major innovation ever in Wikipedia's history, it appears. You have noticed that articles and user pages now feature a second edit tab, which is labeled Edit Beta. That tab activates Visual Editor. Um, Visual Editor allows users to add content without worrying too much about the wiki markup, since it does not use it. You can now write articles exactly like you would write anything in your favorite word processor software. Um, since it is just at a beta stage, uh, what you can actually do right now is uh, adding text, formatting it, adding bullet and numbered lists, adding pictures and categories, adding and editing references and templates. There's a very limited support for some tables. Uh, pretty much everything a basic user would like to do. I'll tell you just a few reasons why, um, although it can still be buggy sometimes, you might want to try it out in your sandbox if you haven't yet. Um, there's a link to my sandbox uh, in the um, in the etherpad, which is link number two, if you want to play with it in the meantime. Okay, the first thing is when you add a wiki link, it will suggest the page you want to link to. Uh, you will not select the wrong page anymore if it was a disambiguation page, for example. The second thing is when you add an image, it will allow you to pick it up from a gallery of all the pictures related to the keyword you use. The third thing, 
um, which is my favorite one. Uh, when you add a template to a page, if this template has already been optimized for Visual Editor and if it features uh, required parameters, you'll find them automatically listed so that you just have to fill them and you're done. And then, of course, you, you can add more if you need to. Uh, should we um, should we do a little demonstration of at least one of these features, maybe? I feel um, like we're moving through them very fast, so maybe we can can show what it looks like to add add a, an image or something like that. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, if you want to, can you please do it so that I don't have to? Yeah. Okay. So I, I clicked insert media. Um, here you should um, write, I think, um, the um, a keyword like yeah. like Apple. Okay. Okay, and here you'll see many many pictures of apples that you might want to choose. So yeah. just pick one. This red apple, I like it. Okay. There you go. That's it. Um, did you already try the Wikilink thing? Uh, yes, but uh, let's try again. Let's okay. So I selected students, and now it looks like it's suggesting many articles yes. that start with student. Yes, it's um, uh, suggesting many things that you will usually uh, find, for example, in a disambiguation page. So you know, you you see how many students union there are. So you just find the the right one and the link, and that's it. You have already created your wiki link. Um, for the template, um, I'm thinking about a template with, with required parameters. Uh, maybe the info box one. Okay. Let's try that as well. It's the last one. Okay. Yes, the puzzle piece. We just type info box. Uh, let's try with info box person, I think. Okay. Add, tem add template. Mm, okay. Yes. Uh, this template has a required parameter, only one, which is, of course, the name of the, um, of the person. The, you will find it on the left. This is this was not added by Pete. This was already present there, and Pete will just add his birth date, and it's done. Okay. Okay. More or less. It's it's pretty much empty, so <laughs> it yeah. won't look much prettier. But um, that's it. But this is really nice because the info boxes, I think, are something that our students often want to edit, but they can be very complicated to edit. So yes. Is it is it possible to use this to edit an existing info box? Is that something you would recommend? Yes, of course, of course. Uh, you can, uh, um, of course, edit whatever you can find on a page. Yeah. Um, the the only thing, as I told you, uh, that you cannot edit right now are tables. Tables, unfortunately, um, do not get along <laughs> much with Visual Editor right now. And also some um, parts which require uh, mass syntax. But as you can see, you, you can easily change everything. And it still allows uh, Wikimark app in the, in the template. As you, as you see, there are the brackets here. Because this is how the template was, um, was written. It was designed to um, understand the Mark app, so it is still featuring it. OK. OK. So should okay. I go on to your um, next link? Shall I go on? Yes, please. Uh, okay, uh, so these were the my favorite features from <laughs> Visual Editor. Uh, there is actually another one. Um, I realized this just a few days ago because 
uh, it was reported by Hugh Gardner. Uh, for those of you who have never heard this name before, uh, she is the executive director of the Wikimedia Foundation. I will uh, quote her words now. Uh, if you're interested in improving the quality of your articles, um, and I'm referring to their style and tone, and if you hope that one day they can be uh, reviewed and become good articles or even featured featured ones, uh, please note these words. This is the first project of the day, although it is not coming from me. Uh, she wrote, the one major advantage visual editor has over Wiki syntax so far which I expected but have still found remarkably pleasurable and useful is this. Back when I was writing articles in wiki syntax, the actual act of writing was impeded by the syntax. What I mean by that is that makeup obscured the actual text you were working on, which made it hard to scan for typos, to control pacing and flow, to essentially do any vetting or refining tasks at all. And the need to continually distinguish between markup and non markup imposed a tiny cognitive processing burden, which was a distraction from the actual work of writing. So I used to compose and refine in a text editor and just paste into the editor to add markup as a final step. That was slow and kind of painful, and although it worked okay with new articles, it was pretty messy and problematic for existing articles. Now with Visual Editor, I can finally compose and refine in the editor and actually see the text, not obscured by Wikisync text. This is easier and faster, but I think the real gain is that it enables me and presumably other writers to actually write better. And over words. <laughs> so now, if you give it a shot, and if you also verify that this is true for you, uh, let me know it. <laughs> I'd move to the second topic now, unless there is something that I should set for right now. Oh, I think that's good. Thank you for that introduction to the visual editor. Okay. Um, so once you have written or improved an article, don't forget to include a picture. I feel this might be overlooked sometimes. Um, pictures can definitely improve our pages. Uh, although finding good and free pictures can be tricky, at least. Uh, it might be easier if you're writing about living people, but if you're not, and if you can't find any relevant image accounts, what do you do then? Uh, do you give up, guys? Never. <laughs> Wikimedians never give up. So this is the second pro tip of the day. Uh, don't be shy. Look for a picture you like and ask the author or the copyright holder for permission to upload it on our servers with a free license. Um, there is a common mistake that many people do. They think that they won't be heard, that things don't work, that you just write an email and someone replies, or that nobody knows what Wikipedia is, what the free licenses are, so they will not care. Um, this could be true some years ago, but it isn't anymore. Uh, hundreds of institutions, uh, especially cultural ones, have learned in the meantime about our mission by participating to some partnerships um, Pete talked about this before, the GLAM programs. Uh, you can still find it in the chat. GLAM means galleries, libraries, archives, and museums. These are the typical institutions which have contributed so far all around the world. So there are countless examples of major institutions and individuals which are actively providing free content. And this aspect, I found out, is the best leverage you can use when you want to ask someone a permission. If you say um, the Brooklyn Museum, the Smithsonian Museum has done this before, uh, they will definitely pay much more attention. Uh, uh, for those of you who are interested, this is link number three. Uh, 
uh, where there's a collection of um, partnerships that provided content for commons. So the first step, if I cannot find a peak on commons, I'm definitely heading to Flutter. You can search for freely licensed peaks there. Uh, they have an advanced search page. If I find what I'm looking for, but it is not free, I ask for permission. Um, usually, I contact more than one photographer to make sure that I get at least one reply. Uh, if what I want to use is already properly licensed, um, another pretty here, although I'm pretty sure that many would beg to differ. Um, you remember that Pete mentioned before the OTRS system, the group of volunteers to handle this permission. I send them an email with screenshot or whatever I, I have that can prove that when I first spotted the picture, it was licensed as free. Because, you know, sometimes these people change their minds. So it's really good to have a record somewhere. Hey, Richard, we actually have an example. One of our students who's not uh, not with us today, but just in the last week, um, just sent a message to OTRS. I don't think it's been mm -hmm. pro processed yet, but maybe we can mm -hmm. pull this up as an example of where someone might uh, want to use this. I'm going to just pull up the Wikipedia article. Um, if you want, you I can search later uh, on OTRS to find it and process it. I'm yeah. not sure if I am able to do it because uh, it depends on the queue uh, the, yeah. that ticket is in. But if it's on a common queue, uh, I I can help with that. Okay. So what she did, uh, this is uh, Patricia Loblin who uh, you may, uh, some of our students may remember from our, our uh, class chat page, our class talk page. Uh, she uploaded two photos of people using uh, these, these interactive sim simulations that she wrote an art article about. Um, she works for this organization, which is out of the University of Colorado. Mm -hmm. And their website uh, clearly indicates that the simulations themselves are available under a free license, but these photos do not exist on their website. So there's really no way to prove to someone who doesn't know independently that they're available under a free license. So I, uh, I gave her some instructions on her talk page of how to send an email that would, um, well, basically, the, the, the main point here is to ensure that this file, that these photos don't get deleted because Wikipedians will go through photos and uh, if they see things that look like they might be uh, in violation of copyright, they will delete them. So even if it doesn't happen today or tomorrow, it might happen six months or a year from now. And the, the more you can do to anticipate that and to document the reasons that it's, uh, that it's properly available, uh, the more confident you can be that it won't be delete, you know, deleted unexpectedly. Yes, and if you uh, want to requ request uh, permissions and you just don't know how, how um, I've added the link number for to to the Etherpad. There, it's on the other part already, and you can find many uh, template letters that you can use, so you don't have to reinvent the wheel <laughs> yeah. every time. And these uh, are available so also on the, um, on the, if you just navigate on the main Wikipedia page, right? If you go through Contact Us, I think. Um, the, um, which one? Uh, I think that you can find... This works for, for Wikipedia, this works for Commons, yeah. whatever. Yeah. But I'm saying I think if you're on the front page of Wikipedia mm -hmm. and you go to Contact Page, uh, there, yeah, I'm not sure if, if, how easily you can uh, get there from from the contact. Th that's the kind of uh, of of work I do in Wikipedia, yeah. <laughs> making sure that people get easily to things and things. Well, if you if you go through here and you find these addresses like info en at wikimedia org, mm -hmm. this goes into the OTRS system. So it, there are several different addresses. 
Um, there's permissions-en and permissions-commons. So these go into different queues where different volunteers will see them, but they all go into the same system. Yeah. So uh, to end my part, um, uh, the last suggestions are that you can also work the other way around. That is, you can let pictures inspire you about what to write next. Um, many pictures are unfortunately just sitting on commons because either because there is no article they could be included in or because simply nobody has noticed they are there. Um, this will, um, I mean, uh, adding mm, content based on existing pictures uh, might also help against one of the worst Wikipedia problems, which is systemic bias. Uh, in a few words, um, some people think that Wikipedia is complete. There is nothing left to write about. As a matter of fact, there are many underrepresented topics, cultures, and so on. So uh, I suggest you read the relevant page, which is the number five among my links, uh, if you're not familiar with this issue. And I will also show you an example. Uh, the Brooklyn Museum uh, donated thousands of files in the previous years after being asked to do so. Uh, you'll find some of them in the category of commons, which is uh, link number six. Uh, they now have an employee uh, who is scattering these files on Wikipedia articles. And when there is no article to ask them, she's creating it, of course. So if you take a look at the articles that she created that are marked with the number seven uh, among my links, uh, you can realize uh, how invaluable this adding is to our encyclopedia. And this was sparkled by the images arriving on our project before the text did. And you can also see that this is helping uh, to document the life of some African tribe. And since the articles are new, um, we didn't know anything before about that. And I don't know what you think about it, but I found this stunning. There are also some tools that can check on which projects the picture are used. Um, they are great to document just how far an image can go. Remember that we have 300 linguistic version of Wikipedia. Uh, so people who donated are always thrilled to see the results. Uh, they are glad to see that some Wikipedias in languages they don't, didn't even know that could exist are using those images. Uh, so the last tip of the day from me, um, don't forget to check this tool out. They're the last link uh, I provided. And uh, use them if you manage to obtain a large donation of pictures. Uh, so, uh, before I read your questions, mm, if you want any guidance about what I told you today, uh, just drop me a line in my talk pages and wiki. Uh, I'll be glad to help. Okay, well, thank you very much for all of that, Elytra. I'm going to just pull up your user page again um, so that people can find you. I think uh, everyone should be very familiar with how to leave a note on a user talk page by now or to, uh, to email someone by going to their user page and then clicking email this user. Um, so let's move on now. I'd like to hear from, from Lane and Matt. And then at the end of the hour, hopefully in the last uh, 10 minutes or so, we can take questions for all of our guests. Um, oh, and I see there's a question. if. Uh, I think all of our guests today are on Twitter, so why don't you guys uh, put your Twitter handles in our chat window so that our students can find you that way as well. So Lane, would you like to give us a little introduction to your work?
And if I'm not hearing you, it could be that you haven't pressed the talk button in the upper left. Not How about now? Yet. Can, can okay. I be heard? Perfect. Yes. <laughs> All right. Welcome. Hey, if I'm not clear, someone just please let me know. My name is Lane Raspberry. I, unlike Elitar, I do contribute uh, to Wikipedia articles directly. I'm most interested in health articles. And to tie in some of the things that uh, Elitar was saying, uh, I'm going to be, uh, I, uh, I, I, I'm going to briefly introduce the topic of open access. And I'm going to say why the, the concept of open access matters for health information on the internet. So one of the things that we just heard was that there was a project called the Visual Editor on Wikipedia. And what the Visual Editor does, it allows people who don't, haven't learned the Wikipedia interface to contribute to any Wikipedia article. So the idea behind Visual Editor is to invite anybody, even people who uh, haven't spent time learning Wikipedia, to be able to contribute productively to the project. Something else that we just heard was that there's precedent for various organizations, especially cultural institutions like museums, to take an interest in the quality of Wikipedia articles. Like, for example, some museums will donate images of their collections. These are stored on Wikimedia Commons, the media repository, and then they're integrated into the Wikipedias of different languages. And the idea is that the museum is uh, expanding their educational mission onto Wikipedia by uh, putting the content where people are likely to find it. And as it turns out, there's a lot of people who are, are very likely to seek content on Wikipedia. Now, I'm interested in health content. And in the field of health, or in, in science in general, one of the major problems of the field is that science information it typically is first published, or it comes to the world through scholarly academic journals, just, just any kind of academic journal that uh, a library might subscribe to, or, or especially that would be associated with a university or research library. The problem is that, for different reasons, it's difficult for libraries to subscribe to all the journals that they would like for their uh, their patrons or library visitors to have access to. There's a, a new model for getting greater access to scholarly academic information to the public. And that model is commonly called open access. What open access is, it, it's transferring the cost of publication from something other than a subscription or a toll to read a given article to some other kind of funding model. So what this means in practice is that if somebody wants to read a research article published uh, in, a, in, a, in a traditional academic journal, they should be able to read this free of cost, just on the request. And the way that these would be distributed now, that they couldn't have been distributed at any other time in history, is through the internet. So if somebody wants to read an article through the internet, the costs are less for each individual reading it than they would be if they were having to have a paper journal actually delivered to them in some way. So the dream behind open access is that uh, any media that's online, especially scholarly academic media, should be available to anybody who wants to read it on request. Uh, let's see. I, I'm sorry, is it possible for me to have screen share? Yes. Um, yes. Let me. Uh, so you, I'm going to click stop sharing, okay. and then I think that you can click start sharing uh, in the upper left of your screen. Uh, you, you you need to share your web browser specifically. Uh, okay. Okay. Can Can anyone Going see up. this? Yes. How's this? Oh, how about that? So I, I'm only going to be talking briefly about this, but I, I wanted to give an overview of health information on Wikipedia. And what I would like to impress upon you is that there's significant numbers of people who are going to the internet to get health information. And a barrier to their being satisfied is lack of access to the original sources of health information, which are the academic articles in which health information is published. So I, I would assert that Wikipedia is important 
and that people should consider the quality of information on Wikipedia because it's just so popular. It's uh, one of the most popular websites in English language. In, in many languages, it's, it's the most popular source of information. Uh, I'm just going to throw this out. I'm, I, I, I can't really back it up, but I, I've heard it asserted that Wikipedia might be the most widely read single publication in history. And part of the reason behind that is is that it's read continually. It's not like a newspaper that would be have, publish an article and then that article would become obsolete. No one reads the old news. But Wikipedia, any given Wikipedia article, is, is read continuously, the same article. It gets updated, but it's still the same article. And for that reason, uh, any given Wikipedia article is, is very often very popular. Why is Wikipedia so popular? Well, it's because Google is preferentially serving Wikipedia articles when people are putting in, in a query. And I, I could see other search engines, Yahoo being, I don't want to um, uh, favor any commercial entity. But it, it seems to be the case that uh, with any search engine, if a person types in a term and there's a corresponding Wikipedia article that matches that term, the search engine is directing people to that Wikipedia article. If not first, then among the first returned results. Uh, one might ask, supposing that people were going to Google and they were typing in health terms into Google search engine. Maybe uh, they've been diagnosed with diabetes and they want more information about diabetes. Or maybe the doctor has prescribed them a certain drug and they type in the name of that drug into Google. Uh, I'm telling you, because uh, I, I've experienced this, I, I, I know it to be true, that Google is very often returning Wikipedia articles in response to search queries. So some people might say, well, anybody can edit Wikipedia. Isn't it irresponsible for people to get any amount of health information from Wikipedia? Shouldn't they always go to their doctor and get this information? As it turns out, not everyone has a doctor available. Some people find it convenient for whatever reason to consult Wikipedia sometimes. And I'm not saying that anybody should plan their health around what Wikipedia says. I'm just saying Wikipedia has its purpose. And Wikipedia health articles are very popular. And right now, there's not any coordinated effort by any particular organization to ensure that the quality of health information on Wikipedia is the best. Just the Wikipedia community is the only group managing this. What I would say to any of you is that if you had interest in, in health or anything else, you've, you've, just, you, you've been talking for some weeks about how easy it is to edit Wikipedia. And, uh, it's just the case that if somebody were to make constructive, good edits, contributions to Wikipedia in compliance with Wikipedia policy, then what they have to share would immediately begin to be accessed by huge numbers of people in a short amount of time. I'd really like to see people in healthcare education spend more time developing Wikipedia articles within their field of expertise, because I really think it matters. Just to give you some idea of what kind of content is on Wikipedia, there's more than 20,000 articles. Uh, about 2,000 of those articles have been through a peer review process internally in Wikipedia and uh, evaluated as, as quite good, certainly better than average. And the, the community on Wikipedia is, is doing even more with health articles. Uh, Here's, I have some more data. It's showing that it might be the case that Wikipedia is the most popular source of health information on the internet. Perhaps Wikipedia is the most popular source of health information in the world. There's some problems with this data. If, if anybody wants to know more, I could, I could speak about this. But certainly Wikipedia, at the very least, is an extremely popular source of health information. So yes, Thanks. question. Yes. Yeah, I, I just wanted to do a quick time check. Um, I just want to make sure that we get Matt in and that we have some time for questions. So I don't know how much longer you're going, but if you if you're I'm able to wrap, wrap this it up, up for within three minutes. Great. Thank you so much. Okay. This is excellent, excellent stuff. Okay. So uh, just as an example, I'm I'm working with an organization called the ADIM Foundation. That's American Board of Internal Medicine. Uh, they've got a partnership with another United States-based organization called Consumer Reports. And we're contributing a lot of health information to Wikipedia. Now, why this matters, or how this relates to open access, is that from the health organizations, the health organizations are recommending scholarly academic journal articles to contribute to Wikipedia. And then those 
uh, academic information, which is supposed to be the consensus of the medical field, is supposed to go into Wikipedia articles. So in, in the course of this happening, it's, it, it, it happens sometimes that the health information that these organizations actually want to get out to the public is not available for anyone to read for free. That is, sometimes an organization will have a message, but all the s published sources which are sharing that information are not free for the public to read. And I would say because of the conflict between open educational resources and the fact that many educational resources, in fact, aren't open, that's a, a problem for society and it's something that continually needs to be addressed and, and thought about. Uh, the impact uh, of, of getting health information out, um, I, I think it, it's been great. Uh, millions of people have, have seen the articles into which these scholarly academic publications are, are being put. And when I say that the, the scholarly information is being shared, I mean it's being converted into layman terms first. So it's something that's accessible in the way that any Wikipedia article would be accessible. So uh, I, I hope that I've impressed upon you all that there's routes by means of which academic information, which the, the layman public tr traditionally hasn't read so much, is beginning to read now. And in fact, if hobbyists, amateurs, and uh, even scientists, uh, students, would have greater access to literature, which is currently restricted by copyright, more of that would end up on Wikipedia, and more of that would be able to benefit uh, society and the people who wanted to read it. And Matt's going to follow up by saying some things about the amount of traffic people are going to learn about open, open educational resources and uh, some more about the, the concept behind these things themselves. Thank you. Okay, thanks so much, Lane. And yes, let's turn it over to Matt and, uh, and then we'll come back for questions in about five or six minutes. So be thinking about questions for any of our guests. Hi, uh, it's Matt. Uh, thanks a lot, Lane. I really appreciate uh, you know, your perspective on these issues, and I think the same uh, sort of argument for health information extends to many other areas, which is why open access is such an excellent area, it's an excellent field to be doing work, as well as open educational resources, um, because it, it can impact a lot of different uh, areas. So right now we're going to poke over to the Wiki Project Open Access page. Maybe oh. we can pull this browser. Yes, I see. Um, so I'm going to... So just switch the screen sharing. Sorry, I'm uh, okay. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. So I've got some links on this Etherpad that you can follow along with, in case we sort of skip around. Um, so the first thing is uh, there's actually maintained by Wiki Project Open Access an open access file of the day, which exemplifies some of what Alicia was saying of the vast, uh, excellent media, rich media resources that are available on Wikimedia Commons and also especially through open access publications, publications that by and large use open licenses, especially the uh, Creative Commons attribution only license. Uh, and you can check, that, check out this uh, file as well as display it using this template tag uh, on your user page or elsewhere. I recommend taking a look and maybe you will be inspired, for example, to write an article uh, due to some great image or video. Uh, it's always surprising, surprising things. Um, Secondly, I'll okay, pull that up. Oh, it'll actually show up when we go to this um, okay. individual uh, wiki project page. There. You can add yourself to the members list if you're interested in wiki project open access. If you want to follow along or contribute, uh, I recommend it. It's an excellent community of folks. Uh, hopping over to the actual wiki project page. Um, you can read and, and learn a lot more. There are lots of updates. Uh, and below, you can see an example of that template I mentioned, the open access file of the day, um, which is this is what will show up on, uh, on your page or any page where you use this template. Uh, and today, it seems to be some sort of uh, tumor, an uh, image from the, a medical journal, um, which is excellent and relevant. If anyone's, for example, researching uh, cancer and they're trying to find the latest uh, literature, some of this stuff is actually available um, to get to pretty quickly. Um, great. So, what we're going to talk about today, it's relevant for your course and OER uh, as well, is doing assessment as well as uh, how assessment can work and how it can be very valuable uh, to contributing to Wikipedia. 
Um, so many of these wiki projects actually go through the labor of categorizing and tagging lots of articles so folks know how to improve them and also so this particular community can approach and go about improving articles that have impact and are very valuable. So below here under tasks, under assessment, I'm going to show this whole thing, you can see what's already been achieved. More can be added to this, especially if you happen to find an article, you add a new one through the course or, or uh, what, what may have you. Um, you can tag them and they will show up in this uh, actual table. Uh, you can see there's been a 337 total that have been identified as open access related. There's many that are in the top priority list that actually need uh, quite a bit of uh, work, uh, upgrading from sea level, for example, um, as well as some that have been unassessed. And this is actually really relevant for the course because out of this list of unassessed articles, and this we just popped over to a tool uh, that will show you um, different uh, category uh, articles. So we're looking at this particular category of unassessed articles for the Open Access Wiki project. There happen to be several that are related to open uh, educational resources, including uh, MOOCs, Massive Open Online Courses, uh, Open Source Curriculum, uh, and Open Textbooks, as well as other, like Open Management Education. Um, so let's take a look at a few of these articles real quickly, and we'll just do a little bit of an overview um, of, you know, what do these things look like. So for MOOC, it's fairly obvious at first that, I mean, you, you guys have heard this term a million times at this point, uh, a lot of folks are talking about it. There's been a lot of media coverage. Uh, it's actually very well fleshed out. There's quite a few, if we skip to the bottom, quite a few references. So the open question with this is sort of, uh, where is it at now? What can we use in terms of uh, assessing the article and, and what state is it at? And then secondly, what can we do to improve it? Um, for this for this article, it seems like there, there needs uh, quite a bit of research before we can really figure out uh, what, what could be improved, but maybe there are things that are obvious, uh, omissions, for example, or uh, confusing phrasing and confusing uh, sort of... Um, try not to spoil too much oh, sure, screen yeah. refresh. Yeah, sure, sure. okay. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, so, um, uh, yeah, so uh, this, this could use some, uh, some time, but that's because it's a fairly fleshed out article, and we can see this. For example, um, what Lame is pointing out, if we check the history page, every history page has a link to statistics of the number of folks actually viewing um, this uh, this article. And so we'll check that out, which will take us to an external tool. And let's just uh, show this for the last 90 days. So over the last three months, over uh, 280,000 uh, views um, have accrued. There's some interesting data point here, actually, uh, in the middle of July. I'm not quite sure what happened. There might have been a loss of data collection. But overall, you can see there's a, a pattern. Um, and then there's quite a few people who are coming to Wikipedia probably through search engines, uh, to learn about what a MOOC is. Uh, and so if you're uh, participating in MOOCs, interested in MOOCs, or interested in open education research and open access in general, uh, it would be really, really valuable if you can provide uh, uh, additional um, value in, uh, in or additional content that folks will be able to access and, and uh, read. Because uh, there's a huge audience here. And this, this goes for, for many articles. Um, let's actually go back. Oh, cool. So, so MOOC is one of these um, on the on the uh, upper end in terms of quality, given how much attention it's received. Well, let's take a look at some of these other ones. This one, I think, is a particularly interesting one because um, the question to me instantly, and this is relevant for all of you, and I'd love to get feedback about this, is uh, what is the difference between open source curriculum and open educational resources? How should they be uh, different? How should, should should there be room for some and not others? Um, is there really a, a, a a definition difference? Is there a vocabulary difference? Uh, is there a historical difference? Uh, how, how should this be tackled? And if you sort of look at this, it looks sort of like a stub article, maybe a start, where there's a list of sort of resources, things that aren't exactly fleshed out. Some are links, some are just names of things. And so it really needs some elbow grease in terms of uh, actually covering uh, the topic itself. And so maybe it might make sense. No one's actually suggested this yet. We can pop over the talk page to take a look. No one suggested it, but maybe this should be merged into the OER page in the first place, mm -hmm. um, which would help people disambiguate between you know several different terms for essentially the same concept. So if we wanted to suggest that, what would be a good way to go about that? Uh, the easiest thing to do, of course, if like, you don't have the right template or the right link or whatever, just add a comment to the talk page and say, I'm thinking this should do this, and uh, take the next step from there and see if you can find other editors on this uh, mm -hmm. page to, to figure out uh, how, to, how to make that uh, redirect. 
And then if no one's watching, the, if not too many people are watching this talk page, might we want to leave it on, you know, on another talk page? Yes, as well? exactly. And, and this so is very uh, helpful that we have. For example, this template of the uh, Wiki Project Open Access um, uh, on the on the talk page so that you can actually uh, go to the project and say, hey, I think this is actually very important. It, it doesn't seem important, perhaps, because it's called the open source curriculum page, not high on the quality scale. But if you make the case, for example, that this should be merged with OER, the importance of this article actually raises. Right? And you might be able to find somebody who be able to help or, or just find some resources to, to move forward and, and improve the article in a way that seems to make sense to you. And I think, I think that's where these communities of Wiki projects really uh, play a role in uh, improving um, articles and also, also the editing experience overall. So let's actually, I should probably go back about time. Okay, we want to do one other point, which we'll, we'll jump right now straight to the open access article. Now we can just grab this link. So something uh, I know the project, Wiki Project Open Access, and, and myself in particular, would love to hear feedback on. This is perhaps uh, the biggest task. Um, Lane's contributing uh, quite a bit to reorganizing the open access wiki page. And what I would love to hear is how folks approach and, and can understand and get, what do they get out of the open access wiki page? How could it maybe be reorganized? How could it re really be simplified and improved? Especially if you're new to the concept of open access. Uh, because right now there's quite a bit of content. It's been edited for a long time. There are lots of citations. There are lots of sections. Uh, Lynn's been reorganizing, which I think is very helpful. For example, um, making a definition section and sort of uh, disambiguating some of these terms by making them separate from the, the main text. So if we could get some feedback on this, I think it would be uh, really, really great uh, to improving what is a highly trafficked and uh, top priority article um, that a lot of folks for the first time trying to learn about some concepts are going to go to. Uh, and, and this is our, our first chance and opportunity um, to, to uh, make sure that what they, their experience was good and that their experience was not confusing. Uh, and that they can understand and explain to someone else. I guess ultimately that's sort of the metric. Yeah. Can you explain to someone else what Nexus, what Nexus is? And I think uh, before the class, Matt, we were talking about how uh, how our students might be especially well placed to really make a substantial contribu contribution to this, specifically because you might not be someone with a lot of expertise in open access. Mm -hmm. So when people like Matt and Lane work on an article like this, uh, of course, they have a great deal of experience with it, but sometimes that means that you don't see it with a beginner's mind. So it mm -hmm. can be, it's, it's really a very rich area of collaboration sometimes when you have someone who's new to a topic working on an article alongside someone who's very experienced with it, because there might be questions in your mind that aren't answered in the article that, that someone with more experience might not see. Mm -hmm. So you really, you should be very, uh, feel very free to put questions or comments on the talk page or just to edit the article directly if you can see ways to make it more accessible. Yes, yeah, so or, or you can contact Lane or myself on our talk pages on Twitter or whatever. Um, yeah, get, getting the beginner's mind, I think, is a really excellent way of explaining it, is, is I think what this article needs, given its state. Yeah. So let's, uh, we, we only have a few minutes left for questions, so let's, um, let's go back and, uh, and see if anyone has questions for Elytra, Lane, or Matt. We've covered a lot of material today, so um, if you have questions about open access, about, uh, about the visual editor, about Wikipedia's customer support processes, anything, uh, let's, we'll watch the chat window and of course feel free to use your microphone if you'd rather talk to us. There was a question from Glenn before and I think she was asking um, just uh, how often do institutions get involved in uh, Wikimedia programs? And I suggest you take a look at this page. Uh, there's a whole section of the Outreach Wiki, which is um, uh, focused on this uh, topic. So you'll find everything there. Yes, there are dozens, no, hundreds of institutions. Um, that are already uh, collaborating. And if you know someone at the library, at a gallery, whatever, and if they have contents, uh, maybe public domain contents, that would be great. Uh, feel free to ask for guidance. And I mean, uh, we would love to get in touch and get their material onto our wikis.
Okay, thank you for that. Uh, and I see uh, Sarah G has a has a question here. I'm having this really irritating problem with Blackboard Collaborate I sometimes have where it's not scrolling well. There we go. So on a related note, International Open Access Week is coming up next month. So is this is this something that Wiki Project Open Access is doing something something for? Is there any kind of a, a a project that people could get involved in in October to improve Wikipedia articles or contribute to open access? Matt or Lane? Lane, do you do you want to update about this? I think uh, if I remember correctly, we were still in discussions, but I think we are planning on celebrating. Is he on there? There's actually a, uh, a web website for Open Access Week. Lane, any comments on this? Hi. Hello? Can you hear me? OK. Yep. Uh, so the yep. way that Wikipedians in the past have commemorated this week is in collaboration with a project called Wikipedia Loves Libraries. So Wikipedians love libraries anyway, but during Open Access Week, uh, Wikipedia communities in different places around the United States, around the world, will meet at a library and uh, <laughs> spend the day having fun at a library. And in that way, Open Access Week is commemorated. Uh, it's getting to be, getting to the point where people are wanting a more coordinated national national effort. I'm not sure what's at that Open Access Week page that you just showed, Pete, but uh, I, I know some people have an interest in making a bigger um, uh, Making events bigger around the event, and you know, I think Wikipedia loves libraries is a good example of the kind of thing that uh, that students in our class or anyone can do to um, to to build on their Wikipedia interest. Uh, this page that I've pulled up on Wikipedia loves libraries basically tells you how to set up a local event. Um, so it's sort of a it, it it gives you some ideas for how to reach out to your local public library, um, and you know maybe suggest that you have a Wikipedia editathon or meetup uh, where you get uh, um, local Wikipedians and people interested in Wikipedia to come and get together and and talk about or work on Wikipedia for maybe a couple of hours. So this is something that gets put together. I think uh, October and November are the months where there's a uh, a focus on on uh, Wiki, Wikipedia loves libraries this year. You see on this page, there's a list of libraries that will be participating. It's supposed to be the last week of October, but okay. people do it any any time around then. Yeah. And one of the ways that something like this gets uh, gets advertised is on the uh, and you you would find uh, instructions for doing this is uh, through people's watch lists. So if you're logged, so I'm logged in. In near Berkeley, California, and when I go to my watch list, uh, the Wikipedia software notices where I am and that I'm close to Berkeley, and so it puts this notice up here. Here's this specific event on September 21st that I might be interested in. So it makes it pretty easy to promote your event to people who might be interested in it, or at least one class of people who might be interested. So um, let's see. Any any other? Uh, we're right at right at the end of the hour, um, so we should be wrapping up. I'm just going to take a look at the. Uh, so Glenn is interested in the slide about Wikipedia putting the material at the top of the Google search. So this this class session, of course, will be archived like all of our others. But uh, Lane, maybe you have. I don't know if your presentation is available online anywhere that people can go directly to it. Uh, if so, please put that in the in the chat window. All right, well, I think we should wrap this up. Uh, but I look forward to seeing you all in our lab session in two days on Thursday at the same time. Uh, I think there will be lots of questions and ideas growing out of this session and, of course, our last session, too, where we had Adrienne and, uh, and Priscilla talking to us about Wikipedia and OER. Um, I hope that you're all making some progress on your final projects. Uh, if you're, you know, if you're already forging ahead with those, or if you're still looking to get started, please come by the lab session and 
uh, we can talk about your ideas. So thanks again, and thank you very much to our guests, and we'll see the rest of you on Thursday.